All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we have a real good, interesting video. And this video is gonna be by Kiko. And that is the glue pulling company that does a lot of the glue pulling in the industry for the collision as well as the PDR work. So we have a guy here that's a trainer for Kiko. We got the new cart, we got all the stuff that we got now for the shop. And we're gonna show you guys some of their products and he's gonna show us how to use the product. So this is gonna be a special one for you guys out there in the collision world, so stay tuned. All right guys, welcome to Kiko Training. Today we're gonna to get you guys up to speed and familiar with all the equipment here on the, on the glue cart. Go through a slideshow that uh, explains, explains a lot of stuff to you and then we'll get hands on and work with you guys on some repairs today. Kiko Manufacturing is our parent company. They've been in the plastic manufacturing business for over 60 years. Molded parts for whatever people need, specialty items. We started branding glue tabs in 2010. At that time, designed for the paintless dent repair industry because at that time, that's where glue pulling was. Our mission now is to bring GPR into the collision repair industry. To do that, we have worldwide headquarters now. We're expanding everywhere. Main base is still in Oklahoma City, but we've now, we now have worldwide headquarters in, in, your, in the UK, in Australia, in Belgium, and Canada. We are bringing glue pull repair back into the collision industry. A lot of people get mixed up. Glue pull is not paintless dent repair. GPR and PDR are completely separate, different entities. Glue pulling repair is a non-invasive technique where we use plastic tabs of various shapes and sizes and adhere them to the panel's clear coat with different types of specialized glue. The adhered tabs are then pulled with a variety of different lifting tools. The process is designed to slowly shrink the size of your damage as you're, as you're repeating the process, you'll start using smaller tabs, smaller knockdown tools, smaller lifting devices, until you reach your desired threshold and get move on to the next step of the repair. Again, GPR is not PDR. It can be used to complete a full paintless finish, but at the core and at its root, it's an independent process that applies to all any, almost any and all collision repairs that you would you know, use studs or any other methods for. Pull to paint is what we is, is what we like to say that your you know your goal is. You don't have to completely paint, paintlessly finish it. You just want to speed up and clean up your repair process to move to the next step. You know OE standards, two millimeters of filler before refinishing. That's what your goal is going to be. The benefits of the non-invasive repairs: it doesn't harm the e the factory e coat. Uh, it's safe on hybrid and electric vehicles. There's no holes or tears in aluminum from welding. You're not, you, there's no chance of burning the insulation or sound deadeners on the back side of a panel. Um, teamed with modern day fillers, you can keep the factory finish intact. There's no chance of cross contamination on aluminum substrates with tools and things like that either. It's time efficient, it's easy to learn, it provides quality repairs, and it's affordable, which all leads to increased profitability for everybody involved. Here's a time-lapse video in about 12 minutes this Honda Odyssey hatch went from what most guys tell me that would be a replacement panel to a to a very you know a very reasonable repair So obviously we wish they were all that clean and that smooth and that easy. They're not, but you know, when you guys when you guys learn, you know, get better with this, that kind of stuff is possible and achievable within what, 14 minutes. 
A lot of people question if it's strong enough. GPR continuum. It, it explains the difference between rough out work and, and getting into more 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 clean detailed finish work. So we don't expect we don't expect you guys to be you know do, doing flat finishes on day one, but we do want you guys to get there, and we want you guys to get there as fast as possible. When you're starting out, you're going to use aggressive movements, single action lifting mechanisms, bigger tabs, um, slide hammers. K bars, you know things like this is what you're going to be using when you're on the rough side of it. Uh, you'll be using larger, heavier knockdowns and body hammers just because you're going to be moving mass amounts of metal. Once you start getting a little bit more controlled, you'll be getting into the K beams and the K bars, the Robo Lifter, which is the little hand puller. But this is, you know, this is a really precise hand. Hand, uh, hand control lifter that you probably see PDR guys using around here. As you start getting better and more controlled and more detailed with it, you everything is going to kind of get smaller. You'll use smaller, lighter knockdowns. You'll use smaller finishing tabs, more precision, just understanding and knowing the, the difference between the pressure, the, the tension, and what you guys are doing. The, um, here's some of the other benefits of it. There's no, you got you guys physically don't have to use as much energy and tear your body up with grinding and sanding because you're not gonna be doing as much of that anymore. You don't have to get this down to bare metal to weld a stud to it like you guys have done in the past. That goes for you know steel and aluminum. There's, there's less dust in the area. It keeps everything, it keeps you cleaner, it keeps your work area, you know, the car, the, 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 the area that you're repairing, there's, no requirement to put e-code on the back side of the panel. That'll probably save you guys a lot of R and I time on you know quarter panels and stuff like that. You don't have to detrim the inside of an SUV to get back there and spray e-code on it after you've stud welded it and burnt it up. Uh, tighter repairs means less blend work and less panel replacement is going to be required. Less overall filler is going to be used because you're going to be shrinking down your repair areas before you even put the filler on there. Um, you guys know that fillers can be used right over OE surfaces now. You know, you get through the through the clear coat and into the paint and etch it enough to get you know to get some filler to, or, or a glaze to stick. And you're keeping the factory finish intact technically. You're not creating the fail point that you normally would if you have to grind and heat that panel up to go down to bare metal and and warp it. No less less welding. You guys can use this stuff. You know, he, this is probably the biggest, most cumbersome piece of equipment we have. And this is nothing compared to a pro spot. So that makes your guys' lives a little bit easier too. Um, and then last, but definitely not least, this is recyclable. Um, now we'll get into the, six, the, the repair process. There's six steps to the repair process that we focus on. They're all equally important. The first step is to check check everything. Check, check your repair area for process building. Um, check your OE procedures. Make sure you know your substrate, substrate material. Check the full extent of your, of your damage. Learning to use the lighting aid in the reflective light is going to be huge for you guys to identify crowns, uh, subtle highs, uh, deep lows. Uh, once you guys learn how to read that light a little bit better, you'll you'll be able to start getting more into the yellow and green side of the continuum and getting flatter, cleaner finishing work. Uh, your o your overall panel temperature and your glue gun temperature. We'll get more into it later. There's three three very important temperatures to look for. That's the temperature of your panel, your ambient temperature, and the te ideal temperature for when you want to pull the tab. All of those want to be between 75 and 85 degrees, and I'll burn that into your into your brains throughout the rest of the day. Check your OE procedures before starting any repair, just like you would for anything else. Um, structural integrity is important. We have to follow, you know, you guys have to follow certain repair standards. Know your substrate type. Aluminum, high strength steel, and steel are all going to pull differently. It's obviously easy to tell the difference between aluminum and steel with a magnet, but the difference between steel and high strength isn't so apparent and sometimes isn't even detailed until you really get into the OE data of the car. So you want to know if you're pulling high strength steel so you can choose your tabs and choose your sizes and your lifting tools properly. You want to, you want to be able to see the full extent of your damage. That's where, the, like I said, the inspection lamp becomes important. If the estimators learn, learn, uh, get better with the inspection lamp and learn how to use that, 
It makes it easier for you guys to take good documentation photos when you're sending in for, uh, to, to the insurance companies. Um, less back and forth with, with the guys in the shop where you gotta come back and be like, hey dude, you gave me three hours on this because you only saw this part, not the, not the big buckle at the other end of the panel. So it'll help you guys be able to identify that kind of stuff too. Overall panel temperature is very important because of extremes. If the, if the vehicle and the metal is too hot, it's gonna take forever. It's either A, gonna take forever for the glue to cool, or B, it's just not gonna cool properly and you're not gonna get the, the, the full strength of the bond. If you pull something in, you know, if you know you're gonna to have to glue pull something, try to pull it inside and let it cool down for a little while before you work on it. Um, extreme cold, same thing. The glue will cool down too fast, it'll become brittle, and all, you know, all the polymers that are formulated in there for the strength of the bond, you're not gonna get that if, if it doesn't cool the way, uh, symbiotically the way it wants to. Your glue gun temperature is important too because if your glue is too hot, it'll boil and it'll boil out those polymers and, and, the, and the, the adhesion properties that are formulated in the glue. If the glue isn't hot enough, you're not gonna be able to release those polymers and, and adhe the, the adhesion promoters that are in the glue. The second step is to choose. You wanna choose the right tab, the right lifter, and the right approach based on your substrate. Take the time to assess your repair and evaluate what you're gonna be using. You, you gotta pick the, t the right tab, the right glue. You guys don't have to worry so much about the right glue because you are in a temperature controlled environment. We will explain the difference between the two glues as we go on. The correct lifting tool and the right knockdown. Some of these choices of what you're going to use is going to be is going to de be determined based on your place in the GPR continuum. How comfortable you feel using another tab, a smaller tab, repeating the process before you get it to the next step. Your substrate type, your damage size, and your end goal. These are all things that you're going to be thinking about. You, you know, you guys all map out your repairs and know, you know, as you're getting ready to start working on something, you kind of look at it, figure it out, you know, like I said, start mapping out your repairs. It's no different with this. There's different, different materials for the tabs. We have the blue, the, the, the old, the regular dark blue material and the ice material. They pull differently for steel. Steel and aluminum, you're gonna use different, uh, different types of tabs, different sizing of tabs for also because of the substrate. For steel, the first thing you do is you select the tab that's shaped like the dent and or body line that you're going to be working on. The tab should fit with just within the edges of the dent and the secondary damage ideally is going to just be visible around the outside of that tab. These tabs, the rigid tabs that have the spine on them that are not flexible, obviously are going to be for shallower dents and the flexible spine tabs like these you're going to use on deeper dents so you can actually lay it into the body line or into that bit, the, the big crevice of where you're where you're going to be working and then you, you want to control the pull just enough to to where you see where you see the secondary damage that's visible around the outside of your tab come flat you don't want to over pull and over stretch the metal you don't want to lock metal up in the wrong place when when you you have multiple different areas that you're pulling at the same time so controlling your pulls and not over pulling is very important also for aluminum Again, the first thing you do is select the tab shaped like your dent and or body line. Generally, the best results on aluminum is the flexible tabs, which is the darker blue material. Even though this is rigid, it's still a little bit more flexible than the ice material. The ice material is going to give you more of a, um, more of a snap, where the flexible blue is going to give you a little bit of stretch before it snaps not literally like you're not literally going to be able to stretch it unless you're using these tiny tabs sometimes you can see the neck stretch on it a little bit but it's it's literally the difference in the material being a little bit softer and that's the way i can kind of compare it is like snapping versus stretching before it snaps um, the dead center super tabs are the most effective for pulling focus on aluminum the shaft of the tab needs to sit inside the dented area and the flexible outer edge sits around the outside of the area you'll see a measure you'll see uh, some a measurement on these like this one says 24 millimeters the one in my hand is 36. using the correct lifter start the correction process using the double action method to get metal flowing here's the double action process explained with the little with the little funny arrows going back and forth so this method involves careful placement of the tab so that when slight tension is applied, directional tension is created. The directional tension will begin to pull the crown that's associated with that dent in that damaged area back in. 
when you're knocking down the crown under tension, the metal will want to flow back into place naturally rather than having to just beat it hard and force it and pit everything up. This, this process is repeated until the desired results are achieved and you shrink everything down to where you want to move on to the next step. Picking the correct knockdown tool will make sure that metal movement is efficient and clean. When knocking down using the double action method, you, you, you take away the need for force. We have the heavier body hammer, we have the lighter finishing body hammer. They also have distinctly different faces on them. This is not a smooth polished face underneath the rubber. This is just to kind of help protect the OE, the OE surface. These are for, you know, little, slightly smaller. This is what you will, this is what you guys will use as the base when you're using like a, a single handed uh, tap down, knock down device. This with the rubber on it is going to be, be a softer tap with, uh, with more of a dispersion. Take this off, you have a polished smooth face for fine finish work with, you know, slight crowns. When you, guys get, when you guys start being able to identify that secondary damage in the crowns with the inspection lamp, you, you'll start using this a lot more. And you'll, you, and you'll be using the knock, the, the, this knockdown a lot more. The reason this is modular and, you know, you can keep it different sizes depending on what you need. If you're using the long legs, you can still get, you know, if, if you have a tab in here, this is still tall enough to where you can tab gets brittle and starts cracking, then it's gotten too cold before you've pulled it. You don't want to pull anything below 75 degrees. 75 degrees is your baseline for your panel temperature, for your ambient temperature, and for your glue temperature. If you're fighting low temperatures in the winter, which you guys won't, some markets do, but you do get a little bit of cold here about sometimes. About four days a year. About four days a year. We get about 12. Between January and February, I get a handful of mornings where there's frost on the roofs. You can you can warm your air, you can warm your panel up and your glue up a little bit if it's cooling while you're setting up other tabs with the heat gun. It, that that's this that's really all all you're going to need for that, especially down here. Adjust your pull times accordingly to make sure you get the best bond. You know, pre prepare for filling. Use you know it's when you guys are ready to move on, you guys are ready to move on. That's, that, that's pretty self-explanatory. We got the lights set up over there. Um, we'll, we'll get a jump box or something to power it with. Best for you guys, if you can, to get like a, like a, like a wheelchair type of battery, like a 30, 35 amp hour um, AGM or deep cycle battery, something that's actually meant to get discharged and recharged continuously. Jump boxes don't last very long on that light, so if you're doing a small quick repair, that's fine. But if you guys are gonna be using it, you know, for a couple, a few hours on a big in-depth repair, the, the little uh, booster packs don't last. The lighting and reflection are a critical part of the GPR process. You can go to pulltopaint.com, which is where we have on all our online training manuals. The Kiko YouTube channel has awesome videos from our instructors, as well as just, you know, guys in the field that use it and like to, you know, a lot of guys in, uh, especially in PDR, retail PDR because it's a kind of a new a new trendy movement. Um, use social media to their advantage and get the word out there for what, what they're capable of now with equipment like this. Any questions? <laughs> now we, uh, so what, what we do to help you guys understand the light and tab placement is we make, you know, we'll, we'll make controlled small vents, have you guys, you know, put a couple small tabs on there use the small hand lifter just you know just kind of get an idea and a perspective of different pressure and, and different tension um, we want you guys to especially be able to do like small dings we want you guys to be able to take that even if you don't get a completely flat paintless finish just get it to the point to where you can sand it and it, it and it'll and you don't have to put any filler in there yeah. it'll block it out get it to where if it's a blend panel or even if it's a panel like you guys don't want to have to if you're working on the back side of this door and there's a small dent right here, you don't want to have to paint that and then turn the next panel into the blend panel. So if you can get that close enough to just block it out, you know, you've helped yourselves and you've helped everybody out with a cleaner repair. We want you guys to be able to do that like by the end of the day today. We want, you know, we definitely want you guys to be able to, and because we take you away from production, we try to work on things if there's any, bit, you know, this is a training day, not a demo day. Sometimes we'll have the whole shop and the whole crew just working on one or two cars throughout the day so everybody gets hands on the equipment and hands on the tools. 
some shops like you know it, it all depends on what you guys needs are what what your availability is you know what your, how much time your bosses want to let everybody off of production yesterday we got a good solid half a day out of everybody but then you know sean was starting to give me the stink eye and it became apparent that after lunch it was time for guys to go back to work <laughs> all right so that's the video part of this actual here instructional video now we'll get on to some hands-on with the body man in the shop and try out some of their kiko equipment being able to to use the light to your advantage and to and see the damage rather than feel the damage is what's going to be able to get you guys into the cleaner flatter finishes so with this exercise i'll get my sharpie out everybody's going to going to take the sharpie and pretend that the sharpie is a, is a is a glue tab okay again you want to be able to see just the outside edge of your secondary damage around the edge of that tab so you guys all take a turn walk up look around see if you're seeing the same things that i am that 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 tab fits almost completely inside that dent but you can see a little bit of shallow metal around the outs the outer edge when you're placing the tabs whatever however you guys would would, would set it down is how i would like you to try to hold the sharpie and just try to use that to hit the center of that dent you can turn the light to any angle because again, not everything is always going to be round. This one is in particular because we made sure it was when, when we put the dent in there. But this is, this is a visual placement exercise to get used to place, you know, just, just to get used to the tabs. Like just dot it basically? Yeah. Yeah, just dot it. Now we're going to use, we're going to use more of the ice material tabs for this exercise because also it makes it easier uh, well, shoot. We we have a tab. If we were, if we had the clear flex glue in there, it makes it easier because then you have clear visual representation and you can almost follow it to that marker point. Uh, you're so from from that angle, you're actually forward and a little bit to the left. You, you defaulted to holding it like a pencil. That's not going to help you place yeah. a tab. Use the fingers that you would use on this tab. And that's what, how you want to try to hold the Sharpie because if you, with a glue tab, you're not going to be able to rest it all the way down your finger like a pen or a pencil. So it is that, I mean, any way that you can get that visual, uh, visual representation in the hand-eye coordination is, go, is a good thing. There you go. A little bit behind center, but that was very, very close. The damage is par the damage that you're looking at and working on is parallel and you are perpendicular to those two, to the panel and the light creating the T. You want to be looking straight on at it. You did it, you got it, that was good, but you cheated. <laughs> Why? Because you're holding the Sharpie like you're holding a pencil, like you're writing with it. Right. You're not going to be able to rest a glue tab all the way up your finger for the accurate placement. Therefore, the idea of the, that is to mimic the same way you would be, I mean, three fingers, however you would do it, but that's the, the, the idea of it is to mimic the way you're gonna be getting used Put to placing the tab, the tab down in place, yes. Okay, so this would probably be a little bit smaller than what we would wanna use because you could still see almost as much of the secondary damage as you're covering with the tab. That's where we say if the tab is too small, you're not going to lift the entire dent, you're just going to lift the center of it. And then you're going to leave yourself a shallow ring around, around that. So we, would, we want to use a slightly bigger tab. Even that one, I'd go maybe one larger. What is the difference between the clear tab, the, the clear pulling studs and the dark blue ones? It's a different, pla it's a diff it's a different plastic. The ice material is a harder plastic. Yeah, that's my the, 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 the darker blue is a softer plastic. That's why I used the reference earlier of this one would be more of a snap versus this one giving you a little bit of stretch or a little bit of flex in the process. These work a lot. These pull harder and they work really good on shallow on shallower dents. You guys, you guys will get used to what what you prefer. It does. Like I said, it really doesn't take as much time as you think to get used to it. Who wants to try first? All right. Let's remember. Let, let's not forget all the steps here. First thing we want to do is we want to flash that panel to 120 degrees to make sure all the moisture and humidity is, is, is off the panel.
That's perfect. That's perfect right there. Because you, it is going to squeeze some out when you when you place it. Okay, yep. Now, if you see a lot of bubbles coming out of the glue as you're too filling hot. a tab, it's too hot. Turn it down. I've got that thing set just below 200 degrees Celsius. Um, so that's you know 195 Celsius is 385 Fahrenheit. That's where we recommend keeping the gun. Um, I also recommend getting a second glue gun so you can have both glues going through a gun at the same time for different situations you don't want to waste a whole stick just by purging it through not because not so much because of the cost but you don't want to run out of your materials and your supplies in the process of waiting for a reorder so it would be totally useless and counterproductive to have to purge sticks every time you change from one to the other glue guns especially corded glue guns are not expensive you could go to Walmart and get a Sherbonder glue gun, uh, the high temp Sherbonder glue gun, and that'll work just fine. Here's what you want to look for. So you've got an open window here that you can see what you're pulling. Okay, when you see that secondary damage go away and become flat, you're done. You want to pull that tab off, see what you've pulled and move to the next. So it looks like that's pulled up a little bit already. Now. You don't have to you don't have to start your pull right at the very beginning. It's actually a little bit better to let some tension off. If you start your tension here, you have the opportunity to give it like a slow draw and control your tension. If you start your pull all the way down here like you've already got it tight. Yeah. I mean, you could literally use this to pull also. Like you can crank this hard enough to where the shaft is making the pull for you. Like right yeah. now, if you look in there, you could see a little bit high around that, around around the bead of glue. And that's from not even put, putting anything on it. If your tension is already set, you're not gonna have any control over it. You might as well be using a slide hammer. Because the whole thing, the whole point behind this is to be able to control the tension and how much pressure you're putting on that pull. Because for something like this, you know, just a little bit, we, you don't see that secondary damage ring anymore. Now let's get this off. Whatever you can use to get under there and pop the seal. Once you pop the seal between the, the glue and the tab or between the glue and the panel, then everything else will start to peel off better and easier. These tips are different, different uh, points. And then this one is wider for like trying to knock down and tap down creases. The threads in here are are removable again you guys have to remember everything in this system is completely interchangeable we want to make sure that you guys have the threads in case you have to put this on something um, that it screws into the this the black swan knockdown are, are kind of our signature knockdown um, it, it accepts all these different tips this is good this is gonna knock down big wide crowns um, you can you'll use this a lot on your actual knockdown. When you when when there's nothing on here, it has a polished metal tip, like a PDR guy would use for micro micro highs. This is adjust. Obviously, you could tell that this is adjustable, so you could change the angle. The awesome thing about this, this thing took me some time to get used to and learn because I had a single knockdown in my hand for years. I love this because it rests on the panel. It rests on the panel you can hold it in place without having it kick out on you a little bit. It's really easy when you're using a knockdown like this, if you're slightly off, like this, this has got a pivot tip on it, which again, you can get this in and around the K-beam, so you can work crowns while you're holding that tension on there. Um, the pivot tip is great for that, so you can get it in there on an angle, but most of your tips don't pivot like this. If you're not, if you're not completely at a 90 degree angle, you hit that, it, it will kick on you just a little bit and scuff the surface. If you're going for a super fine, clean finish, you don't want to do that and scuff the surface. Uh, so this is nice. By, by putting pressure on your palm, it takes a lot of the vibration out of the hit itself, which disperses energy and takes strength away from your hit. And it also keeps that open working window so you can see where exactly that you are versus having a death grip around this and completely covering that window that you're trying to look at. So.
if you have to pick it up and move it every time and, and take the moment to set it back down, do that because that's exactly what this is for. Okay, now get back there. You can see that dent is noticeably smaller than it was from the first pull. So now you're going to want to go to a smaller size tab. Smaller tab. Now this is the first time we're using this tab, so we want to flash it even before we clean it. Get that, or, and or you can clean it, then flash it, whatever. Just get, get it clean, get that humidity off of it. We don't need to flash the panel again, but don't forget we do want to clean it. Just a quick spray and a wipe before you put another tab on there. Now, when it pops off like that, that just means that you've exceeded the, 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 stre the strength of that particular pull, and that will change with your temperatures. Okay. If you leave it sit on there longer, it can snap off a little bit easier. Um, again, you guys will get used to the you'll get used to the to, to the pull times in the in the you know the ideal win window of uh, of pulling. Trying to get the guys to be able to see and read the lighting aid, most importantly and trying to get this as close to finished as possible is part of learning how to see the light. Yeah, what, what you like, you how far you take that, that and how flat and how smooth your finish is, is gonna depend on, you know, see, flat finish, rough out. Right. It's, all, it, it's all relative to the repair and the technician and their skill level at the time. You want to be able to see that secondary damaged area because once that comes flat, that's when you that's when you can stop. So you recommend not pulling it all the way or just playing with it a little bit? Playing. If you're if you're snapping it off, you're usually over pulling. Okay. I mean, not not guaranteed, but you're usually going to be over pulling if you're pulling it so hard that the glue snaps off. So if I don't see that little roll anymore. It's a good. That's a good. Feel comfortable yep. to stop. Now, that's now. Now now's a great time and place to stop. Peel that off. Knock down any highs that you need to knock down, and then choose a smaller tab because that what's left is going to be smaller than what it was. He's still here. He's still here. All right. So Dave's been here with us through the day, helping us try out different attachments for the Kiko, and giving these guys a lot of experience in trying out different things. That way, once he leaves, they know what they're doing. So this isn't my aspect of the uh, business. You guys know I handle the paint, but if this could be a lot less invasive, we're not going to have to use the E-code on the back of the panels, and we're not going to have to use as much primer and fillers. So I'm all for it. So, And especially, it gives it a nice, clean repair. So he's here showing us all the stuff, and look at all the stuff it has on the actual cart that is uh, from Kiko. So... I hope you guys got something out of this video. I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to Dave. That way he can give you his Instagram and his YouTube channel as well. All right, so let me introduce you. This is Dave Detlaff, and he's the guy that trained us here today. And uh, what do you got to say about this stuff here? Uh, glue pulling is the future of the body shop industry. We, one shop at a time, are going to be replacing stud welds with glue pulling. It's cleaner, it's smoother, it's faster. It's uh, less invasive, it's better repair for the vehicle, it's better for the technicians. There's not as much energy spent in sanding, welding, big pro spot machines, things of that nature. And uh, we're just trying to bring new technology into the industry, cleaner repairs. You don't have to worry about burning um, sound deadener or foam block on the back side of a panel. You don't have to reapply E-coat and it's just a much better overall clean repair for the body shop. All right, so also you were telling me that not only do you handle this as training for Kiko, but you have your own Instagram and YouTube channel as well. Go ahead and... Yes, I do. You can find me and you can see some of the work that I have done on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Just look up Top Flight PDR, Top Flight Paintless Dent Repair. We're in Myrtle Beach. We got any door dings or larger dents, anything, uh, anything that doesn't have damaged paint. Bring it down to us in Myrtle Beach, and we'll take a look at it and get it fixed for you. All right, so appreciate what you did here. Thank you, Tim. And we'll see you next time. All right, guys, so it was definitely a good instructional uh, video and a class that you guys seen there. And uh, I really like checking that stuff out. Even though I'm in the paint side of it, I always want to learn as much as I can. So hopefully you guys learned something out of it. Go ahead and follow Dave. I'll leave the links in the description below, and we'll see you guys on the next one.